Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, I am Alexis. And I am Louis. We are an international couple that lives together in Switzerland. I'm originally from the United States. And I am Swiss. So we have been getting recently lots and lots and lots of questions about traveling in Switzerland, our recommendation, our tips, and we get some of the same questions over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I thought we would make this video where we consolidate all yeah. the information so you have the travel Q&A here. So I asked you guys if you had any questions about living in Switzerland, traveling in Switzerland, and we got a lot of questions. So we're gonna get through as many as we can today and stay tuned for the end of the video because we have an exciting announcement. Let's get into it. So one of the questions we've gotten asked many times in different ways is our recommendation for our top places, the hidden gems, the different places we would go if we had only limited days in Switzerland. We'll try to tackle this one and give you our favorite. It's tough. I'm going to try to break down this question into different parts. First, in terms of the time of the year, summer and winter. If you are in the winter in Switzerland, we really recommend going into the Alps, the mountains. And the Alps, I would say if I had to pick a few, I would pick Zermatt, I think is really amazing, was the Matterhorn. You have Grindelwald also that is beautiful, with Wengen also that has that view on the Lauterbrunnen Valley. So these for me would be my top in the winter. I don't know for the summer what you would do. In the summer, it depends on what kind of traveler you are because some people are really into hiking and mm -hmm. then I give very different recommendations and if you like to yeah. explore cities. Yeah. If you like to explore cities in the summer, Lucerne is really beautiful and mm -hmm. extremely touristy for a reason. <laughs> I kind of hate when people say like, oh, it's so touristy, I don't want to go. It's touristy because it's beautiful, it's beautiful yes. and it's popular for a reason. Basel is really beautiful and yes. Bern is really beautiful. They're all really, really nice. If you like to hike, mm -hmm. again, the Alps are still really beautiful mm -hmm. in the summer. So I think it depends on what kind of traveler you are. I know this is a long-winded answer to say. <laughs> it depends. The other thing it depends on, and this is just something to consider, is mm -hmm. does your flight go into Geneva or Zurich or yes. your train go into Geneva or Zurich? If you go into Zurich, you might have a little bit easier access to some of these places in the Alps, but if you fly to Geneva... From Geneva, actually, you have the Lavo that is beautiful in the summer. So this is the whole vineyard region that is between Lausanne and Montreux. And you have also the Bernese Oberland then with the Golden Pass line that is absolutely beautiful. All this uh, region is a, a valley that we really love. So to summarize, it depends, but <laughs> there's a playlist here of dozens of videos all over Switzerland. You can't go wrong. Send us a DM if you're really lost and we can try to help you, but everything is beautiful in Switzerland. Just think about what time of year you're going and if you're an active person or if you prefer to explore cities, I think that's the biggest thing you need to know about yourself before you try to plan a trip. So the second thing we get asked the most, and yeah. we got asked this four or five different ways just yesterday on Instagram, and that's about the Swiss travel pass and the half fare card where they're valid. I get a lot of different kind of questions about that. So you can see the different ones here. Mm -hmm. I'll try to tackle all of these immediate questions I've gotten asked, but we get asked this a lot. So to briefly explain the differences, the Swiss travel pass is something that is for tourists. Mm -hmm. You pay a set fee. I will link all this in the description so you can kind of take a look at the, the fares. You pay a set fee, um, and this is for everyone that's over six years old. If you're under six years old, you don't need this, which is nice um, mm -hmm. if an adult has it. So you pay a set fee and everything within three days, five days, seven days is free mm -hmm. for the most part. The half fare card, that's something a lot of people who live in Switzerland have, that you pay 185 francs one time per year and then everything is half off within Switzerland. Yeah. Most things, again, within the area of validity. So this is going to take a little bit of number crunching on your end, how long you're coming to Switzerland, how much you plan on using the trains. I get a lot of blanket questions like, is it worth it to get it? And that's a hard question to answer if I don't know what your plans are and how long you plan on traveling, um, because it can certainly save you quite a bit of money if you're planning on traveling a lot via yep. train. And fall, yeah. So there's an area of validity here. The map's a little confusing. I think Louis can explain it better than I can. I think just the, the one thing to take away from this map, and you, you have a PDF and you can zoom in, I think on the internet, is if you have a full line, it is into uh, the, the travel pass. If it is a dotted line, it is usually half the, the price. So it's not free if it's a dotted line, and usually these are gondolas or Swiss mountain trains. But 
it will give you a half fare, which is still pretty interesting when you have some pretty uh, expensive tickets. So just one, one way I would try to take advantage of this tr Swiss travel pass is to use it if you are traveling quite a lot between, for example, if you're going from Geneva to Zurich in two days and you are going to do some gondola Swiss trains. Also boats are usually free, are almost always free. So that's something that is expensive, but pretty uh, good value with the Swiss travel pass. Mm -hmm. So that's a way I would uh, take advantage of it. Some of the things I get asked most are, is the Glacier Express, Bernina Express, Jungfraubahn, mm -hmm. all of those, they're not free per this. There's a key at the top of the map. You get discounts and you get pretty significant mm -hmm. discounts, but I think the general rule of thumb is if you feel like it's too good to be true, it probably is. So those big ones that are very kind of popular, expensive, Giratosaurus, not included, but all of the intercity, interregion boats, all of that is included within it. So to get you from point A to point B, the Swiss Travel Pass is really great value. Again, I can't give you an answer. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just like, is it worth it? Yep. I don't know. Depends on how long you're coming and what you're planning on doing. The other thing I get a lot is if you need it for your child, if you're six and under, it is free. Just look that up. There's also family passes for the Swiss Travel Pass. So if you're mm -hmm. like four or five mm -hmm. people traveling together, you can get a bundle. So just take a look, I'll link it in the description. This is another one where I can't just give you an answer of should I get it, should I not get it, but hopefully that helped explain some of the yeah. differences. And if you want a full video, I could go into it quite a bit yeah, more. Just it. let me know. Maybe. Yeah. So another question we've been asked was about Swiss road trips. So I really like taking the train in Switzerland, but we also tend to take the car sometimes. And I have in mind one really great uh, road trip that I recommend to people because you see beautiful lakes, also nice mountains and beautiful places. And I just love it. And I, <laughs> when I have the, the possibility to go through it, even if it takes a little bit longer and it's not highways, I absolutely take it. So this road trip is starting in Zurich. You go then to Lucerne. This you can take a highway, not too much to see. Uh, there, but then Luzon is beautiful. And then I go actually to the valley of the Sarnen and Lungernsee, mm -hmm. and the Lungernsee is maybe one of my favorite lakes. Then we'll see other lakes, and these will be also my favorite lakes, maybe. But this Lungernsee has an amazing color. If it's sunny, it's just mind blowing. You have rolling hills also that are beautiful in the in the spring, summer, uh, in the fall also, and then you go up the mountain a little bit. You have beautiful views on that lake, on other mountains. And then you, when you go down, you go to the Brienzersee and then get to Interlaken. Also beautiful lakes, maybe my favorite ones. <laughs> and you get to a really cool region there. You have, you can actually with the car do a little detour to Lauterbrunnen, Grindelwald. All this region is accessible easily by car mm -hmm. and is absolutely beautiful. And then I would go continue to Spitz, to Zweisimen, and then to the valley of Gstad. This valley is just amazing. It, it feels very Swiss. You have these mountains, these cows, it's green, and you have these chalets. Absolutely beautiful. You have Gstad, Rougemont, Sand, uh, Chateau Day also then, and then you can go down to Gruyère, which also Alexis loves, I love too. <laughs> uh, enjoy some cheese there, and then end in Montreux. You can do this, of course, in several days, but this is for me the beautiful road trip you can do. And to, to finish, uh, to get to Geneva, you can actually not take the highway, but take the Route de la Petite Corniche. So this is in the Lavo. This is the vineyards overlooking the Lake Geneva and the mountains. And it's just absolutely amazing. You can stop in the vineyards, take pictures. It's just amazing. And then you can go to Lausanne and Geneva, also nice views, but this is for me the best road trip you can do in Switzerland. <laughs> so this next question is about entering Switzerland. The question asker specifically asked from the United States, but this would apply to any third party country right mm -hmm. now. So anything not in Schengen. So it's pretty straightforward actually to enter Switzerland. This is as of January 30th, 2022. All you need to do is be vaccinated to board the airplane. So you don't need to prove that to mm -hmm. buy a plane ticket. You need to be vaccinated to board the airplane and you need to enter a PLF, which is a passenger locator form. 
and they'll also probably tell you in the airport when you're checking in to just do it quickly online. It's really easy to do. You just need to kind of give them contact information. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Theoretically, yes, if somebody gets COVID on the plane or whatever, they can contact you, but you need to do that. And then be your vaccinated, that's it. Once you're in Switzerland, you need a QR code. This is where Switzerland I think is leaps and bounds ahead of its neighbors because it has a really easy way to get the kind of Europe QR mm -hmm. code that the United States and a lot of other countries are not using yeah. in Switzerland that's valid in Switzerland and the rest of Europe. So what you do is there is a link in the description. It's 30 francs and you have to give them your vaccination record, a photocopy of it or a picture of it whatever official documentation you've gotten from your country. So if it's the US, it's the CDC card, mm -hmm. a picture of your ID. That's really it. They say it can take up to five business days. I haven't heard it taking more than one for Very anybody. <laughs> and then once you're in Switzerland, that's all you need. So you need that to go to a restaurant, a hotel mm -hmm. or whatever. But right now it's actually super straightforward traveling to mm -hmm. switzerland the restrictions and the rules are very very clear you can always check the kind of swiss public health website mm -hmm. they update it a lot but the ag i think that's yeah it. as of right now it's super easy i'll put some resources in the description but yeah that's really all you need mm -hmm. to know not too big of a deal right now so the next question we've received was about weekend trip from Geneva. I'm myself from Geneva, so I'm going to take this one. <laughs> Geneva itself, if you are just traveling to Geneva, is worth spending some time in, of course. We have a video about Geneva, but if you want to get away from Geneva a little bit, we have different beautiful places for you. In Switzerland, we would recommend going to the Lavo region and Montreux. This is just beautiful. You can spend a whole weekend there, enjoying the vineyards, the view from there on the lake, the mountains, also discovering the Chateau Chillon. And Montreux itself is really nice. The promenade is, is beautiful. Gruyère is one of your favorites, I think. And it's a very cute little city that has as the name is a very famous cheese for it and it's just amazing what you can eat there some cheese some double creme de gruyere different things otherwise we have also loved ancy ancy is this is if you cross the border into yes. france because so geneva is geneva is very close to france mm -hmm. and ancy is i think called la venise des alpes so Alps, Venice. <laughs> There's a lot of yes. Venice of the yeah. X, Y, and Z well, in Europe. <laughs> it's, 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 it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful lake also. Maybe I would go in the summer more in Annecy. And otherwise, one thing we haven't done a video yet about is Ivoire, which is also mm -hmm. in France. You can go from Geneva by boat with the CGN boats. And this is a very cute medieval village with a very nice flair overall. And I, I really recommend going. So that's just a little taste he's giving you of all the places <laughs> yeah. you can visit from Geneva. We have full videos if any of them piqued your interest mm -hmm. on Gruyere and Montreux and Annecy. If any of those you're like, oh, maybe I'd want to check it out. We have full videos you can you see. You should. Yeah, I hope will give you some more information. Okay, so a question I got yesterday is, how do I save money on food when I'm in Switzerland? So some background on the reason why I think this is being asked is restaurants in Switzerland are extremely expensive. So there are definitely ways you can save money on food. I think a big one is to try to avoid restaurants for every meal if you can. So I understand when you're on vacation, you're gonna to wanna to splurge, eat a fondue dinner out, like those experiences are really nice. But for things like breakfast and lunch, especially if you're on the road and you're hiking, there's no reason to keep yeah. stopping and eating in restaurants. What we do almost all the time when we travel is you can go into a cup or a Migro, those are the two biggest supermarkets, and they have really good options of like hot bar food, packaged mm -hmm. sandwiches and salads. You can grab a bottle of wine, eat it on the lake, Eat it when you're hiking. A lot of Swiss people do this. It's a great way to save money. The food is really good and really high quality in I both of these. Yeah, and you have the view for free. Yes. So that's kind of the easiest recommendation is to try to avoid eating every meal in a restaurant. It's really easy to mm -hmm. do that, but it's a great way to waste money. If you want to eat in restaurants and you're in the western part of Switzerland, this tip will be more helpful for you. There's an app called The Fork or La Fourchette. I'll put it here. This is an app where you can book reservations at a discount, so from 20% to 50%. Mm -hmm. So check that, you can book tables at quite a few restaurants and some are quite popular. So we like to use this when we were in Geneva and that's a good way to save money too yeah. because 50% off a restaurant in Switzerland makes it like a normal price. Yeah. <laughs> and another app that we really like is called Too Good To Go mm -hmm. and yeah. this has like a nice 
sustainability twist that Louis likes to it, which is at the end of shifts or the end of the day. So you can look on the app and there's places that will at a significant discount give you the food that they can't keep for the next day. So there's everything from like the supermarkets on this to bakeries to Starbucks. So there's really a huge range of stuff like this. So the food's great. It's stuff that would have not been used anyway, and then you're going to help save it. So I think that's a really great way to save some money. So if you're interested in saving money on mm -hmm. food, I imagine you're maybe interested in saving money in other places. And that just means that you're a smart traveler because why waste money if you don't yeah. need to? We have an entire video that I'll put here about how to do Switzerland on a budget, some tips that we've mm -hmm. helped and we use them all the time. So they're curated for you. So definitely check that out. So another question we had was about Switzerland in the winter. Is Switzerland still pretty in the winter? And I would say definitely yes. It just depends how and what type of destinations you are choosing. The winter destinations I would choose would be really in the Alps where you can have a lot of snow and it makes the scenery beautiful. The um, cities are maybe not as uh, interesting in the in the winter, but in the Alps, in places like Zermatt, Grindelwald, in the Grison also, Graubünden, it's really beautiful in the winter in villages that are full of snow. So definitely come in Switzerland in the winter, in January, February, March also, you'll have a lot of snow. You'll do other activities, of course, no real hiking, but you can go sledding and skiing of course and enjoying just the, the scenery of the Swiss mountains full of snow. So the next question asker asked me about hotel recommendations in Switzerland. They specifically asked me about it for their honeymoon so congratulations. But I do get asked this question a lot of people asking me to recommend them hotels in Switzerland. And the first and I think most important question is, is what's your budget tier mm -hmm. for travel in Switzerland? Because Switzerland does uber luxurious hotels really, really well. You're going to see palace and five stars and a lot of these logos. And that's going to have a price tag to match, but an experience to match too. So. I'm going to name a few in different price categories. I'll put links to all of them in the descriptions. I'm not going to go into really details about any of them because then this video is going to be 45 minutes long. <laughs> so if you want a video specifically about us going into different hotel recommendations, let me know and we can go into that. But mm -hmm. some different ones in different categories, I'll just go into now some of our favorites. So starting from the top, and this is like your highest, highest yeah. end of luxury. The Zermatterhof in Zermatt is absolutely amazing. This is really classical, a classical five-star hotel in the Alps. It's really, really beautiful. If you want to see the Matterhorn, this is the place to do it. Also in the Alps, you have the Gstaad Palace. Again, if you're in Gstaad, you're going to see it from everywhere in the village. It's a beautiful hotel, again, with amazing beautiful food. Beautiful view also. And amenities, it's just incredible. The last one, if you're going to Interlaken, so these are three really popular destinations with amazing mm -hmm. hotels, is the Victoria Jungfrau. Again, going to have a price to match, but it is a gorgeous hotel and a perfect location in Interlaken. Yeah, facing the Jungfrau, actually, that is amazing. Yeah. So those are three that I would consider. I'm going to link them all in the description. Mm -hmm. You're going to look at the prices and you know <laughs> they're, they're going to match with the experiences. But if you're here for a honeymoon and you want to stay in them, yeah. maybe not for the whole trip or a few days, it's something to look into. They're really, really amazing experiences. So the next set is kind of more in your mid tier. So these are hotels that can be two, three hundred ish dollars or francs per night. So not cheap, but you know, more in kind of the mm -hmm. reasonable range, I think, depending on the time of year you're going. Mm -hmm. The first one is the Grand Hotel Suisse Majestic that is in Montreux. We are particular to that hotel because we are having our wedding celebration there this summer. But that is a beautiful hotel in Suisse Romand on the Lake Geneva. So you have an amazing view of the lake. Yeah. You can walk down the promenade and the hotel itself is really lovely also with beautiful views. Mm -hmm. In the Alps more, you have the Cambrian. That's a hotel we always go to for our anniversary. It has a really amazing outdoor pool that just has this like beautiful <laughs> heated pool with the view of the Alps, which we just love. It's absolutely amazing. So that hotel is really lovely as well. And the village of Adelboden is super cute. 
Mm -hmm. Just over the mountains and the other valley on the other side of those mountains is the Lankerhof that's in Lank. So that hotel is amazing if you are interested in spas and saunas. And I imagine people are probably like, who isn't interested in those things? <laughs> They're amazing. So this hotel has seven different yes. saunas and hammams and ice rooms. And it's just so great if you just want to go to a hotel where your goal is to be in the hotel for the weekend. It's humongous. Mm -hmm. You can hang out in the saunas. They have an incredible restaurant on site. So that hotel is less for the location. It's still beautiful, but really about being in that hotel. So some budget hotels that I think are really great because of their location and they still have a balance, I think, of like amenities and the rooms are nice for the mm -hmm. prices. I would check out the brand Moxie. This is part of Marriott's collection. They keep opening more in Europe. Yeah. They've kind of designed themselves as this like trendy hipster millennial hotel vibe. I don't exactly know how to describe it, but it's definitely nicer than staying in like a hostel or a really low budget hotel, mm -hmm. but these can be rooms that are around a hundred dollars a night, even less, yeah. sometimes even less. And they have them in amazing locations. Mm -hmm. So we've stayed in a few, they have one in Bern. That's just one train stop away from the city center of Bern. There's one in Lausanne that's mm -hmm. really well located as well. And they just opened one in Rappersville. Yeah which is on the other side of the Lake Zurich, mm -hmm. which is easy to get to Zurich, but Rappersville itself is quite beautiful. Yes. So definitely check out that brand if you're looking mm -hmm. for more of a kind of moderate price tag, but still well located and not kind of in the middle of nowhere. In general, it's hard to find deals in Switzerland. And I think mm -hmm. these hotels are a great mix of that. If there's anything else you'd like me to cover hotel-wise, let us know because we can make yeah, we can really make, uh, a full video, a video on this. So the next question is between cars and public transportations for day trips, what's you, my recommendation? I would say that public transportations and trains are pretty efficient. Maybe you can look in advance, for example, in Zurich for that question, you can get to a lot of different places by train very quickly, efficiently. So this is quite nice. We could go to Schaffhausen in 30 minutes, to Engelberg in less than two hours and lots of places by train, it's super efficient. Of course, by car, if you are a big group, also from a, from a budget perspective, it might make more sense from a budget perspective to take a car with five people rather than a train if you don't have a half fare car. This is something to consider depending on, on how many people in your group you are. But really, I, I like public transportation. It's also just a very nice experience to look at the window during the train and uh, it's, it adds to the experience overall. So I would push for public transportation, but definitely cars are also nice. If you are going to places that are a bit more remote where you have to take a bus, it might make sense to take a car. So our last question asker asked about places to stay in Switzerland if you are on a budget. In general, if you're staying in Switzerland on a budget, what my recommendation is going to be is to avoid staying in the major tourist locations and stay a little bit outside of them. Yeah. So for example, it's going to be really difficult for you to stay in any of the ski resort towns inexpensively. So Stad's going to be really expensive. St. Moritz is going to be really expensive. Cross Montana, Verbier, these beautiful places. You're going to have a hard time finding a hotel inexpensively, but there are inexpensive things you can do in these places. You just need to take day trips there. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you want to go sledding or luging, you can get a pretty inexpensive pass in Zermatt to go up the mountain and luge or do something like that. You don't need to stay in the village. You could just take a day trip in. So my recommendation is to take advantage of Switzerland's train network and pick your hotels and your accommodations accordingly and don't stay within the hyper expensive areas mm -hmm. because the hotels are always going to be the immediate thing that sets you back tremendously. You can still enjoy the, the ski lifts yeah. and the sledding and the things like that and remove the biggest part of the expense. So just take a look a few stops away and maybe remember how small and easily it is to travel within mm -hmm. Switzerland. You can be like two train stops away from a city and be in the city in 20, 25 minutes. So just consider that. I think it's going to save you quite a bit of money. And then you can use that on the experience rather than the lodging. I think that's yeah, our probably definitely. biggest tip. Yeah. Okay. So if you remember at the beginning of the video, we <laughs> said we had an announcement and the first part of the announcement is 
we're moving to Geneva. Yes. So we are leaving Zurich and we absolutely love it and are maybe a bit sad to go, but we are really excited about the reason why we're moving. So we are moving to Geneva because we are expecting a little baby. Yeah, so <laughs> a few of you have commented on videos and you've noticed that Louis has been in front of the camera more. <laughs> which is very shrewd and smart that you notice that and that is because I am almost seven months pregnant so if you haven't spotted it I am quite quite far along the way so I have been behind the camera so we are still going to make travel videos and living in yes. Switzerland videos the content just might evolve over time to include traveling with a kid and the travels are going to change mm -hmm. a little bit but we are so excited to share this news with you guys so that being said, thank you guys so much for thank all of these questions. Yeah, really. I'm thinking about doing a part two about living in Switzerland because I had a whole bunch of questions about lifestyle, lifestyle, yeah. immigrating here, working here. So if you have more questions like that, leave them in the comments, yes. send them to me on Instagram. I'll start to collect them. And once I get a good amount, we'll make a part two. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. So if you like this video, share it with a friend, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.